Good evening. So you, you all have great potential. That's good news for the beginning. The question is how to maximize your impact. Okay, so this works. How to maximize your impact, how to reach your goals. Everybody can dream big. Everybody can achieve great goals regardless of uh, his starting or, or their starting situation. But I will start with some bad news. <laughs> so what's the bad news? Life is short. And the younger we are, maybe the less uh, we know about this. On average, you have only 26,000 weeks to realize your goals, to fulfill your dreams. So 26,000 days, sorry. So you should plan carefully how you approach and how you maximize your impact. So today we will talk about how to do it. I will give you a recipe. It will be uh, a simple recipe. It's only three ingredient recipe, so I'm sure you will be able to remember it at the end of the session. I am sure your goals are very ambitious and uh, challenging, so please listen carefully because this might help you in your life. Uh, this recipe its not a unique recipe, it's not uh, a universal recipe maybe, but uh, it's a recipe that works. I have used this recipe throughout my career so far and it uh, worked very well for me, so I, I would like to give you those secret ingredients. What is first ingredient? And it's uh, technology. Uh, the best way how to increase, or one of the best ways how to increase your impact is to make technology work for you. Not, it's not you working for the technology, but the technology working for you. Technology is a technique. It's a technique uh, it's a way how people do things. If uh, you invent or discover a new technique, a new way of doing things, the value of the technology is multiplied by the number of people using, who use your technology. So the technology is, uh, is a leverage. Technology gives you access to new markets, Technology helps you to increase the impact of your ideas and it helps you to attain, uh, to fulfill your goals. The difference between technology solution and a restaurant or a barber shop is that you can uh, fry only one egg at a time, you can cut hair to you can cut hair to one customer at a time, you, but with technology you can scale up. And with technology, if many people like your technology and use it, the impact is uh, of much greater value. So this is the, this is the leverage I talked about, the techno technology is leverage. My background is in engineering, I studied in IT uh, information te technologies, that's, that's what my background is. And uh, I, I really I enjoy technology the whole my life. When I was uh, at the university, I developed a novel fingerprint uh, recognition software, which was more accurate and faster than previous uh, previous software or software used by the competition. And uh, we. The success was, at the beginning, I was the only user of this software. But uh, in 10 years, uh, when uh, we established through benchmarks that the software was very good, um, it, the, the number of users grew from, um, or went up from one user to 900 million users, just in 10 years. That's the power of technology, and if the technology scales, the impact will be very big. You just can't fry eggs or cut hair fast enough. If you want to make a big impact, you can do it by developing a new technology. And if your technology becomes popular, your impact will be enormous. There are two more ingredients other than technology. And the second is, and my second advice is, uh, 
I would like to suggest to focus, focus on high value activities. Uh, you should spend most of your time doing high value or high impact activities. And uh, let me explain what are those. So what is, what, is what is a high impact or high value activity? It's an activity which um, helps you to increase your reach and which helps you to achieve your goals and to fulfill your dreams. Of course, some activities will be of high impact, other activities will be of very low or, or zero impact. So let's see, let's, let's see if together a few examples. Technology has a big impact. We saw it, we saw it together. Working on a new revolutionary technology is a high impact or high value activity. So that's the activity you should focus on and that's the activity you should spend your time on. Uh, when I was young, my parents always told me you have to, uh, you, your, your bedroom is not clean, you have to clean it up. And I was, uh, I didn't like it. And I think I was right, because this was not a high value activity. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so messy. <laughs> okay. Studying and improving your skills is a high value activity. It will increase your reach in the future and it will, uh, it will pay off uh, many times. Playing computer games is probably not a high value activity, unfortunately. Talking at a conference like this is a high value activity because you can reach many people with your ideas. Yeah. One important high value activity is planning. Planning helps you to be efficient and to focus on the right, on right kind of tasks. Of course, some high value activities are not high pleasure activities. And uh, sometimes people like to do high pleasure activities, but uh, they don't do high value activities. So it's important to understand the difference. Mm. It was also true in my, in my life. When I was uh, younger and I had people working for me, and they didn't really know what to do. They went in different directions. They didn't have, have clear um, goals. And because I didn't like management so much, managing people, delegating tasks, giving feedback, this was not my stuff. But uh, then I thought about it more and uh, I was thinking, yes, maybe this is a high value activity. And by realizing the fact that it was a high value activity, uh, there was a shift, a mind shift, and uh, I changed my opinion about managing people, and I started to focus more on it. And at the end, I even started to like it. So the fact that when you realize that a, a given activity is a high value activity, it will help you to perform this activity better, and it will make you enjoy such an activity. In your case, you will have to make a choice uh, which activities are high impact activities and which are not. And this is very subjective and for different people mm, those activities are different. So my advice is you should uh, think carefully and deeply and uh, constantly reevaluate and try to see which activities are of highest value. And this is not easy. It requires you to, to think uh, about your weekly activities and that's something I do at the end of every week. I go, I do a mental, I, I go through all my um, weekly activities and I try to see, okay, this maybe was not an activity with a high impact. So the next week I just skip this activity. So, and you have, you have the freedom and you have the choice not to do, not to perform some tasks. You can always, uh, you can, <laughs> you can uh, always skip some task, or you can delegate some task. 
or you can just decide not to do it at all. And it's important to, to realize that you have this choice. When uh, I was younger and my parents told me you have to clean your bedroom, mm, well, sometimes, well, or I are obey them. But I also had a choice even though I didn't realize it. So please choose wisely the activities you do and uh, maybe team up with uh, people who can do some other activities you can't do very well. There are some activities you will not be good at. Uh, like uh, me at finance, mm, not so great. So you can, and this, this brings us to the next uh, ingredient, and this ingredient is teamwork. It's, uh, you can do things alone, but it's not the most efficient way how to do things. Of course, you have, uh, nobody is good at everything. In, uh, in a company, you need people who are good at uh, marketing, you need people who are good at finance, you need people who are good at programming, you need people who are good at product management, you need all kind of different people, and nobody is great at all those uh, tasks and activities. So what, what you should do and what we do in our daily, daily life, we cooperate. And that's what the teamwork is about, we do things together. And my advice is, you should focus on your strength rather than on the activities you don't like or the activities you are not good at. Together you will be able to build better solutions and when you team up you will also learn mm, interesting things, new approaches from your colleagues. When, when I was a student, and when you are a student, you tend to compete against other people. The, from the beginning, uh, well, you compare your grades against others, and you want to be the best, you want to achieve the maximum, and basically you want to beat others. So, do you think this is teamwork? Is this teamwork? I don't think so. It's, uh, it goes completely in another direction. And this was a big discovery. When I started my university studies, we had this, uh, and when we passed successfully the entrance exam, we had this talk from our, um, from our head teacher. And he told, he told us, okay, you are all great. And we know, and you know, everybody knows you are great. But you know what? Forget about it. Don't think about it at all. You can perform many tasks, you are great at it, but it's not important. What counts now is cooperation. So look at all the, those people who are around you, try to find out who, who is good at what, and try to and please work together. You will achieve much more. And I think maybe that's the best thing I learned at university. Okay, so this was my three ingredients recipe, but uh, to be honest, I don't like cooking. <laughs> and three ingredients, it's quite a lot. <laughs> and it's difficult to remember. So as a bonus, I would like to give you a one ingredient recipe. So I hope you will enjoy it. And the recipe is extremely simple. And it's, it says, create your own startup company. <laughs> okay, so why, why, this will, why this will increase your personal impact? Because it combines all those three ingredients. First, in a startup, you work with other people. You, usually, you have co-founders, you have, you have a team with with who you work on a daily basis, you spend nice nights together, you work hard, and you learn from each other. Second, in a, in a startup, you don't have time. Uh, you don't have enough resources, you don't have enough people. You have to focus on high impact or high value activities. 
that's the only way how to survive. And third, su successful startups tend to work in the world of technology, tend to develop new technologies, tend to revolutionize them. So that's why startups will increase your personal impact because they combine all those three ingredients. Of course, creating a startup will be a challenge. It won't be simple, it will be, it will be a process, but uh, I think it's worth it because at the end you will, if you succeed, if when you succeed, you will love the result, you will love the outcome, and you will love the feeling re related to a successful startup. Thanks.